Gracias a todas y a todos. Good afternoon, everyone. This is hearing number seven of the 184th ordinary period of sessions of our commission entitled Situation of the Human Rights of uh, Defenders, hum um, Justice Operators, and the Rule of Law in Guatemala, which was requested by Bufete Jurídico de Derechos Humanos in, Guatem in Guatemala. I am the president of the Inter-American Commission. I am joined by the country rapporteur, Arosemena de Cortino, Mr. Hernandez, the rapporteur for human rights defenders, and Commissioner Bernal, the rapporteur for persons with disabilities. We also have the uh, monitoring secretary, Maria Claudia Pulido, the um, rapporteur for freedom of expression, Pedro Vaca, and the ESCR rights, CE rights, sorry, Soledad Garcia Muñoz. I would like to greet all the representatives and uh, allow me to explain how the time will be allotted. First, we will listen to the civil society for 20 minutes, then the state for 20 minutes as well. And finally, the Inter-American Commission will speak for 30 minutes as well. After that, we will start a second round of participation. The civil society will speak for 12 minutes, then the state for 12 minutes. And uh, you know that you have a timer measuring time. I will be uh, watching it, but please try to follow it as well. So let's begin. Now I will give the floor to the representatives of the civil society. Thank you very much. I would like to greet the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights and the representatives of the state of Guatemala. My name is Irubina Hernandez. I am a member of Convergencia por Derechos Humanos, and I'm speaking in representation of the uh, groups that requested this hearing, and I would like to thank the commission for listening to us. I am joined by uh, other members of Convergencia por los Derechos Humanos, Claudia Gonzalez, an independent attorney, Edgar Perez from the uh, Bufete Jurídico de Derechos Humanos, and the um, uh, defender of the Quechi people. We would like to um, denounce the uh, aggressions against the human rights defenders in our country, something that's been going on with anomalous uh, processes in the appointment of authorities with the objective of ransacking the state and ensuring impunity for themselves through um, elections that are actually done with fraud. We still see harassment, intimidation, and criminalization from the uh, Office of the Public Prosecutor against the um, mechanism against torture. The rapporteur of the mechanism, Judge Letes Castellano, is part of the um, a lawsuit against the um, prosecutor of Fessi, who was tortured and has been deprived of her liberty. And to these, uh, the, the mechanism was also denounced. Um, several prosecutors from the agency of um, the agency that controls the armed conflict. We are concerned about the presence of paramilitary groups in manifestations. Since 2021, we have documented 28 illegal detentions in seven manifestations or demonstrations. There's a high risk for communicators and journalists because of the persecutions against them. That was the case of Sonny Figueroa and Marvin Del Cid, who were victims of illegal detentions and aggressions by uh, agents of the civil police, as well as threats, harassment, and criminalization because of their investigations, which had uh, visibilized corruption networks involving family members and associates of the President of the Republic. And other journalists like uh, Juan Luis Fon have been forced into exile. I will now give the floor to Jorge Santos. Santos. Good afternoon. Considering this context, we would like to express that there is uh, harassment against the communities that defend human rights in general, but in particular against justice operators, uh, land defenders, echo defenders, and persons who defend justice. In this hearing, we would like to point out two particularly serious situations, the situation of justice operators and of 
uh, land and environmental defenders. The right to land and human resources are constantly uh, violated by the, by the army. Not only do they uh, murder activists, they also burn their lands. We would also like to denounce criminalization processes, articulated campaigns against the leaders, and even baseless report uh, denounces. Since 2021, 1,002 uh, aggressions against defenders were registered. 200 of them were against justice operators. And among the most affected groups are public officials with 136 people who uh, defend the right to justice with 135 aggressions, journalists and social communicators with 127. And this year is no exception. Starting uh, between January and April, there were 201 attacks on human rights defenders and 117 were criminalization actions. And we are sure that we will continue to see this and more throughout the rest of the year. So I will now discuss some violations to due process we have identified. First, um, the, um, the um, obstacle, the obstaculization of uh, legal proceedings, excessive the uh, excessive use of uh, figures of, um, of the reserve, for example, or uh, limiting the uh, limiting access to files so that defenders won't know what's within them. Then uh, court personnel personnel won't allow the civil society and the media to access hearings. And when they request more information, this information is not provided. For Another pattern of vulneration of due process are unilateral hearings where non-state actors are also part of the um, suit, but there is no presence of those who are being criminalized in the hearings. Throughout this year, the um, public prosecution has started harassing and criminalizing uh, several state attorneys, and it has also acted against independent, honest judges. One of these cases is seen in the persecution against Miguel Angel Galvez, a judge who, after the re resolutions he issued in his office, he is now being criminalized. The case of persecution against him is tangible uh, evidence of the harassment against those who have fought corruption and impunity. And there are many justice operators who suffer exile and who are persecuted because of doing their job. Their job. Judge Galvez many a time showed that he is an independent judge. He has also stated that he wishes to continue to work in justice, being unbiased and independent and following in the international standards of human rights. For that, it is very important to stop the persecution against him and other independent justice operators and for the Guatemalan state to ensure an environment of respect towards the rule of law and, independent, and judicial independence. Thank you very much. It is important to point out that before the reduction of the uh, democratic space in justice, um, this has led to um, less sanctions and reports and criminal reports. And it has also led to the destitution, um, sorry, a drop. I'm sorry, it has led to the destitution of many justice operators who have fought impunity. There are many state attorneys who have been reported because of the work on high impact uh, investigations. Some of them have, had, have received 60 reports, some of them 10 to 15. They all seem coordinated export, I'm um, sorry, actions uh, by anti, by pro-impunity groups. And these continuous attacks have become more intensive 
um, as well as the report filed by the head of the FESI prosecutors, Mr. Kurukuchi, and other public officials who were investigated and now are reporting uh, that there were unlawful acts in their investi in the investigations against them. These networks have um, discourse that is branded by their hatred. They call terrorists and communists those who fight against impunity. One of the persons who have been criminalized is former state attorney Virginia La Parra from Tental Tainanelgo, who was captured and sent to a center of detention in Mariscal Zavala after reporting a judge. The first three months she was in prison next to, along with people who were part of criminal structures who had been investigated by her office. And now she is suffering intimidation just because being, being part of that office. She is the only one who has left in preemptive prison so they decided to give her a small cell in isolation with the possibility of going outside for three hours a day. But they have refused to uh, allow her to um, leave the prison center because of her having been a state's attorney. It is evident that the uh, judge in charge of the case is dilating the process that who are uh, actually uh, trying to um, sustain impunity and who have made misogynistic comments against the state's attorney and who have objected the possibility of her being freed. This judge ordered Virginia to be transferred with no reason to an even more restrictive prison because now not as many people can visit her and they can visit her for less time. And this shows a deterioration in the warranties for her defense since there are patterns in several cases, a total absence of investigation by the public prosecution because the judge uh, keeps on arresting these people there are many days uh, they, sorry, they assign the um, hearings uh, in different moments with several days apart so that they spend more time in prison and they don't have access to the media. The um, entity in charge of the cases are not explaining the reason, to, um, the reason why they are being uh, treated in such manner. The same occurred in um, the case of other state attorneys. Human rights defenders are denounced because of our work and the justice system is used as a tool against us. And now I will give the floor to the following speaker. The rule of law in Guatemala has been uh, suffering in the past few years. And this is shown by the, um, the way the judicial system is being used in Guatemala. And we would like to explain this illustrious commission and the representatives of the state that we've been waiting for two years for new Supreme Court magistrates to be chosen. This should have been done in June 2020, but because of a constitutional action ordaining the Honorable Congress of our Republic to appoint, the immediately appoint magistrates, still, this represents a very serious delay in the institutions of the state. And it affects the possibility and the right of any person to act to access unbiased, objective, independent justice with jurisdictional bodies made up of persons who are uh, able 
and uh, knowledgeable and honorable. Without that, the credibility, the stability, and the reliability of the justice system is compromised. So there is no legal certainty. But apart from that, the legal institutions are broken in our country because the body in charge of, a, of appointing and training justice operators has also been affected. The Council of the Judiciary um, Career, which is in charge of training and promoting and selecting judges and magistrates, has been halted by um, constitutional action promoted by the Supreme Court, which by a resolution of the High Court has suspended the articles that allow the council to do its work. So now there is a monopoly of power with regards to the appointment of justice operators. This representation shows us that if this is definite, then there will be a terrible setback in the implementation of justice administration in Guatemala. It is also important to mention judicial independence, something that my predecessors have already mentioned, but the systematic attacks that we have witnessed in the past few years against justice operators have made at least 24 justice operators public prosecutors, judges, and other persons who contributed to the fight against corruption and impunity in Guatemala to be exiled. And not only are they exiled, they are suffering. Um, their name, sorry, their name is being attacked by the media, but now they are also being criminalized and prosecuted without justification. There's a total manipulation of the criminal justice system. And a clear example is seen in Judge Galvez, a judge who decided to judge a head of state, a judge who sent a president to prison for corruption, a judge who has always observed who, sorry, who has proven his honor and knowledgeability, but the campaigns against him have abounded. But what's most important in his case is that there is a report against him for the resolutions made in his own jurisdiction. What's, what, what's serious here, that the Supreme Court of Justice uh, actually allowed that proceeding to go on. One magistrate, Magistrate Maria Eugenia Morales, was the only one who explained her vote and said that uh, the judicial independence was being attacked. That's the situation. But uh, as if that wasn't enough, the serious violations against human rights have been uh, terrible. And here we see the abuse of force, the excessive use of force by the police, the criminalization of, uh, of land defenders. And it is the case of Bernardo Cabezón, who will speak now. Hi, I left prison. Uh, three months ago, I was tortured by the state because of hydroelectrical companies who are working on the Cabo River and fabricated crimes that I apparently committed against the state. And why did they do that? Because our Mayan people demanded the state for uh, information and prior consultation rights. 
we presented a writ of amparo that of course bothered companies so they fabricated those crimes in the criminal process they violated all of my rights over 60 magistrates from the supreme court of justice excused themselves from accepting my appeal against this ruling and there are many other colleagues in my situation being criminalized by the state of guatemala and this is also happening to state prosecutors and judges as well so i would like to ask this commission to urge the state of guatemala to respect human rights and for it to um follow the uh, reports of criminalization that we are presenting here thank you very much i would like to thank the representatives of the civil society now i will give the floor to the representatives of the state of guatemala Now we can hear you. Honorable members of the commission, representatives, we would like to greet all of you and following good faith and transparency, we are here to promote a constructive dialogue between the parties. We request the Honorable Commission to ensure that the fundamental rights of due process here in and defense. Um, we do not accept this forum to be held accountable for international responsibilities. The state believes in the principles of the Inter-American system and information that we are going to provide should not be manipulated. The state of Guatemala is a democratic state that tries to enjoy or to guarantee the human rights and warranties of the citizens of Guatemala. Taking into consideration the request of the petitioners, the state would like to inform the following. The Republic of Guatemala was built in a democratic way following the constitutional procedures of the country. It's wrong to affirm that there is a crisis of the democracy in our country. This affects the role of several public officials who are working to guarantee the full enjoyment of fundamental rights. The Constitution of Guatemala established several conditions for the justice system. It established the principle of judicial independence and the guarantees for the exercise of jurisdictional functions. The magistrates are appointed according to the law for the Supreme Court of Justice. The uh, legal conditions do not allow for intervening in the appointment of judicial members. According to the Constitution, the Congress of the Republic passed in 2009, the judicial appointment law, which was amended later, that law determines all the conditions to select magistrates according to democracy and the rule of law, and it promotes a strengthening of the administrative units that regulate judicial appointments. The law has been amended several times over the years in order to guarantee its purposes. Also, the rulings of the Constitutional Court in 2021 and 2018 uh, led to resolutions of different controversies. Also, there has been a regulation of the law on judicial appointments. Also, the competent authority for the appointment of judges and magistrates, the times to select judges and magistrates. Also, the creation of an auxiliary body for the appointment of judges and magistrates. According to the ruling, a decree in 2022 was issued and it includes the regulations to the reforms of the law on judicial appointment. Also, um, there are several actions to comply with these conditions. 
Also, peace judges and several magistrates were invited to participate in the democratic process to implement the regulations of the law. Also, there have been several calls for proposals to choose peace judges and other magistrates. Regarding the protection of justice operators, the um, ministries have a protocol and a set of security measures. And also we conduct risk analysis to determine whether there are threats or vulnerabilities as well as the level of risk faced by magistrates, judges and prosecutors. Also, the national civil police guarantees the security of magistrates, judges, and prosecutors so that they can exercise their fundamental rights. There are also judicial police officers that provide personalized security together with police officers that provide perimeter security. Also, a direction on institutional security was created to direct and coordinate the processes and procedures to protect the president, Supreme Court justices, prosecutors, and judges, and peace judges, and also to guarantee the security in the structure of the judiciary across the national territory. Also, there are also agents from this office and agents from the national police who provide support. We also have different equipment to protect the judiciary and its members. Some of the judges, including Miguel Angel Galmez and former judge Eric Anfalm, have had permanent contact with the security advisor of the president and also the head of the Office of Institutional Security and the coordinator of executive security have provided support and they have not received any warnings regarding their security. Also, the Office of Security of the Public Prosecutor Office has agents to provide personalized security to those prosecutors who request it. It's important to consider that the state of Guatemala has open channels of communication and conducts follow-up on those persons who are beneficiaries of precautionary measures. Sometimes these beneficiaries do not attend the meetings on the follow-up of the measures that they have been uh, received, that they have received. In addition, any person who believes that there could be a crime or a potential crime against a public official can present a report that right won't be restricted. But in order to prevent abuses regarding that right, we have a trial uh, remedy in order to guarantee the effective exercise of the public administration. Public officials cannot be detained or subjected to criminal proceedings without um, the possibility or the real possibility of a potential crime. It's also important to say that any trial proceedings against magistrates or judges should be dealt by the Supreme Court of Justice. They could dismiss these cases if they have legitimate causes or because of the origin of the case. Retrial cannot be considered as a way to threaten justice operators. With regard to requests for trials to eliminate the the immunity of judges and magistrates, we have the process, uh, the um, principle of due process and due diligence. Also, pre trials are assigned to magistrates uh, that do not have an interest in the proceedings or the results of the proceedings. The Supreme Court of Justice is a coll collegiate body and also we follow what is established in the law. Also, in the case of officials that could be subjected to pretrial, they those cases are appointed to judges who are well aware of the proceedings for pretrial. Also, we follow all the legislative and constitutional 
procedures established in the legal framework of the country. The state emphasizes that a complaint is not a final ruling and due process should prevail in order to break the presumption of innocence. What has to do with the confidentiality of some cases should not be manipulated, especially when it does not affect the right to a hearing of the parties involved in the case. With regard to the fight against corruption, we must, we must say that it has been a priority for the state of Guatemala. Um, we would like to inform the commission that as a result of the work that we have conducted regarding the warnings issued in 2021 and those who were under investigation until the end of 2020, we have over 100 corruption alerts. This led to 14 criminal complaints against the public prosecutor office. There were 68 cases who were closed because of administrative issues. And we also received 10 alerts of corruption who were, which were sent to the public prosecutor office. This together with the results obtained in 2020 allowed us to say that 31 complaints have been presented. 26 were criminal complaints before the public prosecutor office. Also of the criminal reports, six of them are in trial and we have three formal accusations, two detentions, one final ruling, and one request for a trial. Taking into consideration the different institutional strategies, alerts can be presented by citizens who are well aware of corruption acts in the government entities of the executive branch, in confidentiality or in public. They can present an alert in written, they can also present a learner online in the website of the institution. Also, they can present ex official alerts, taking into consideration the patterns, the patterns that have been identified. The fight against corruption and the strengthening of the rule of law is one of the main objectives of the public prosecutor office. It's important to focus on the actions are conducted by institutions in order to guarantee access to justice in Guatemala by providing high quality services and also strengthening the capacity of the public prosecutor's office. The aim is to increase coverage and to have specialized prosecution offices across the country in order to address the different types of crime domestically and across the country. We would like to highlight the creation of 276 prosecution offices at the national level. Now, I would like to talk about the different units that were created. For example, we have the creation of a prosecution office in 2020. Um, and this is to continue in strengthening our national strategic plan in order to improve access to justice. This specialized prosecution office against impunity has jurisdiction over the national territory. This prosecution office also depends on the public prosecutor's office and coordinates its work with the different prosecution offices at a national and international level, depending on the support that it requires to fulfill its role. Between November 2021 and today, the Prosecution Office has received several complaints. We would like to reject that there is a systematic attack against the work of the FESI and that it has been weakened. That is not true because the Public Prosecutor Office is conducting its role based on the principle of legality. And this is reflected on the investigations conducted by this institution. We have seen an increase in personnel and in equipment to uh, conduct its work. The FESI as well as other prosecution offices depend on the Office of the Public Prosecutor and the Office of the Attorney General since they are in charge of criminal proceedings across the country. After the creation of the FESI, the structure of the Office of the Public Prosecutor became 
stronger. And these are the results of the FESI. 31 cases have been sent to trial every year against 10 cases before. Then the dismantling of nine criminal structures every year against four structures dismantled before the creation of the FESI. Nine people were sentenced against lower numbers in previous administrations. So what we see is that there is a strengthening of institutionality and the prosecution offices are present across Guatemala. Before the public prosecutor office had only a 16% coverage, coverage across the territory. In April, 2021, we achieved 100% coverage across the country. 91% of effectiveness was achieved in the cases. This is not only for mining of minor offenses, but for any types of crimes. The results are supported by the assessments conducted in the different offices that were created. Also, we provide quality services. And the current administration has certified several offices according to 2015 ISO standards. And also we improve constantly the um, status of those prosecution offices. Also, it was necessary to improve the effectiveness of prosecution offices. 29 offices were included in the case management system so that those cases are dealt with quickly in order to guarantee a rapid access to justice. Also, there is a mechanism to present complaints in order to allow citizens to have a quicker access to justice. We have three online platforms for complaints. We have a record for pregnant girls, and we also have other systems. In no, by, uh, there is no possibility of saying that the public prosecutor office is trying to intervene or to interrupt the work of the FESI. Seven, we would like to talk about the selection of judges. And it's necessary to say that the Congress of the Republic of Guatemala in 2021 and 2022 has scheduled several agendas to select magistrates and judges. We have here the file. And according to this file, you can see it on the screen. You can see the order. The state of Guatemala has informed before the commission that the ruling implies a complex proceeding for the selection of magistrates. In spite of this, the Congress of the Republic has followed the proceeding. Also, we have the selection of the public prosecutor, and this is conducted according to the legal framework in the country. In, on screen, you can see how the public prosecution office positions are selected. We, the, in January 2022, we have the discussion and the passing of Agreement 1-2022 for the creation of the commission for the selection of the attorney general and the head of the public prosecution office. Also, we here have all the proceedings that were conducted in order to fulfill or to complete the different positions within the public prosecution office. The whole procedure was transparent. It was broadcasted on social media and on public media civil society organizations were able to participate during the public hearings and also were able to participate in the different dialogues had with the commission during the procedure. As in order to guarantee transparency, the president of the Republic interviewed on two occasions the six candidates for the public prosecution office. The interviews were scheduled and they were broadcasted live on social media. After this phase, in May 22, the uh, for Dr. 
Maria Consuela Saragueta was selected as public prosecutor, taking into consideration one of the decrees of the Congress, um, the prosecutor of human rights uh, was chosen following this decree, taking into consideration international treaties and also instruments ratified by Guatemala. Article 10 of the decree establishes the selection process for the human rights prosecutor. The prosecutor will be chosen for a period of five years by the majority of Congress in a session specific for that purpose. Uh, taking into consideration what has been presented before, you can see on the screen the process to appoint the human rights prosecutor. The state reaffirms its disposal to keep an open dialogue with the commission with truthful information without any bias or a specific interest. The state requests the commission to contrast the information presented in this hearing. And we believe that our information can be verified. In addition, the state of Guatemala would like to say that there is no persecution against justice operators and human rights defenders. Thank you to the representatives of the states. You took uh, 20 extra seconds. Now I would like to give the floor to the commissioners. So I would like to give the floor first to country rapporteur, Commissioner Esmeralda Rosemena. Thank you, Madam President. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to respectfully greet the representatives of the civil society and the group that, is, that requested this hearing, the illustrious representatives of the state. We would also like to uh, thank you for all the information you have presented. I would like to start off a principle mentioned by the state's representatives, the importance of constructive dialogue, of respectful dialogue, of dialogue in good faith that aims at looking for uh, which is actually the purpose of this commission and of these hearings. We want this dialogue to find a communication bridge. But that's how it was presented by the state. That's why I would like to start off the, on this um, constructive dialogue. Both presentations or showed us to completely opposite positions in terms of the issue we are discussing. And I wouldn't want to take on one position or the other. So for both parties, the central, the core of the issue here is the institutionality of the justice system and what that means for the democratic state, the meaning of judicial independence. So I have two questions about that. The first one has to do uh, with uh, the um, extension of the of the uh, working life in the judiciary with the warranties expected so that its members will be unbiased and independent. And I'm mentioning this because I would like to link it to the what is being said about the lack of appointment and the delay in the process of the appointment of high officials in the judiciary. 
because we see opposing uh, presentations here, here, but it is very important to have a system for um, judicial career in those terms. And my second question has to do with the high number of complaints filed against justice operators, public prosecutors, judges, and defenders. When the civil society says or tells us the reasons for the suspension of the hearings so that it affects the speediness of the proceedings or the restraints on the access to the files, which are a warranty to defend ourselves. And I'm asking this because of what is being said by the state about um, how there is a warranty for due process. So I would like to know from both parties, to, to hear from both parties, to understand this, because these are such conflict, complex issues that they call for follow-up. And the commission, in my position as a country rapporteur, and I know my colleagues and the executive secretariat feel the same, we are all committed to keeping a dialogue. There is space for dialogue that will allow us to find common ground for uh, the justice, so that you can work for the justice system and the respect for the rule of law. Thank you, Commissioner. I will now give the floor to Commissioner Joel Hernandez. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to respectfully greet the civil society organizations and the representatives of the state. I'm going to try to focus on what we are debating um, um, I would like to mention a couple of things that I will uh, propose for the consideration of the state. It's important that uh, to know that these hearings is not trying to point y el único propósito es poder llevar a cabo un intercambio de información. So the purpose of this hearing is to have an exchange of information, and that is what we're having here. As my colleague, Ms. Arosemena mentioned, I hope that after this constructive dialogue, we can build a bridge between the civil society and the state so we can reach a favorable conclusion. Also very happy to hear that there's a common denominator shared by everyone here, which is our intention to promote the defense of human rights by justice operators or human rights defenders. And I would like to explore this commitment expressed by the state is democratic commitment to allow the work of justice operators and human rights defenders without any restraints. But I must also point out some reasons for concern that we have been observing in the past and that are shown here today. Um, it is very concerning to know that 24 justice operators have had to leave the country because of their work, and they are all connected to the fight against impunity and corruption in Guatemala. It is also uncommon for uh, something like the pre-trial, which 
seeks to preserve um, processes from uh, violations, it, it shouldn't be this common. It's used with such frequency that it becomes a barrier for the development of the work. I cannot imagine a justice operator who is constantly having to answer pre-trial um, proceedings. Another thing that calls my attention are the uh, complaints against defender Claudia Paz y Paz. And it calls my attention because in the national mechanisms, they are created by the uh, Convention Against Torture, and their purpose is to protect those who are deprived of their liberty. So I cannot understand the interest of the mechanism in complaining about Claudia Paz y Paz, in particular when we're talking about facts that took place over 10 years ago. There's probably a statute of limitations on that. And that forces someone into uh, using time and resources to defend themselves. These are some of the things that I that call my attention. And there's one other, there's another one thing that comes to mind. I was recently in Quito, Ecuador, in a meeting of the Ibero-American uh, Federation of Ombudsperson, and we worked together, and one of them was um, received an accusation which was trying to destitute him two months before finishing his mandate because he was not in the country. Well, he was attending a meeting of the Ibero-American Federation of Ombudsperson. He was doing his job. So those things are quite peculiar for me. I find them quite odd. And it's very necessary to continue to discuss this and to go beyond the uh, executive. This needs to be discussed with all the branches of power to better understand where we are at. And finally, Madam President, I have a couple of suggestions. The first one is that it would be wonderful if we could receive an invitation from the state to perform in Guatemala follow-up working meetings, working meetings for the follow-up of precautionary measures. Right now, there are eight precautionary measures for justice operators in Guatemala. So a meeting with the state would allow us to check the status of those precautionary measures and it would be a sign of commitment of the state to the observance of these precautionary measures and finally could you please share the progress on the public policy for the defense of defenders are you moving towards a protection mechanism for human rights defenders and journalists as other countries have? In other words, what, how are you complying with the ruling by the Inter-American Court of 2014 known as uh, human rights defenders versus Guatemala? Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Bernal, do you have any questions or comments? Yes, thank you very much, Madam President. I would like to thank you for this opportunity. It's the first the first opportunity I get as a commissioner to take part in a meeting about the human rights situation in Guatemala. And I would just like to ask two specific questions. The first one is about something that caught my eye, the appointment of the high courts, the members of the high courts. I would like to ask how the um, Rita of Amparo ruling can be implemented, the one they showed on screen. And then I have a wider question for the petitioners of this hearing. I see here that you are saying that there are different kinds of human rights violations. Some are against human rights defenders, others against justice operators, others against journalists. But I'm not really clear on whether there's a 
connection between these kinds of violations and what would be the um, source or the cause of these uh, alleged, the alleged cause of these violations and what's the evidence you have for it? Is it an issue of uh, institutions, of the constitutions, are um, constitutional reforms needed or is it about a state policy? So I would like some clarification on that and the evidence you have about this. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I would also like to ask a couple of questions and make a couple of comments. We've recently presented our annual report, which shows on the Guatemala chapter the constant follow-up work that we've been doing. And I would also like to ratify that the commission monitors these events in an unbiased manner with no ideologies. So as Commissioner Hernandez was saying, this is a hearing that is part of the monitoring mechanisms of the commission. This report has a series of recommendations, including uh, justice administration, uh, freedom of expression, ESER rights, and the situation of human rights defenders. So I just wanted to um, restate how necessary it is to have a, a table for dialogue, which we had already established for the um, follow-up of recommendations. And maybe something like this could be done with the support and the technical cooperation that the commission has. And of course, as we said, we would very much like to visit Guatemala with the uh, permission of the state as soon as possible. I would like to ask Rapporteur Pedro Vaca if he has anything to say, Rapporteur um, Soledad Garcia and uh, Ms. Claudia Pulido. Thank you very much, Madam President. You've talked about journalists who are being persecuted, who have had to exile. So I would like to know what the state could tell us about this and what warranties could be offered for journalists. Then secondly, in terms of access to justice and courts and hearings and the publicity of the judicial activity, I would like to know if the participants could share the legal framework for these aspects. And finally, um, we are seeing, I would like to ask the state, what can you tell us about this? Is this a phenomenon? Have there been aggressions against defenders through these dead centers? And are, is there an ongoing investigation? Thank you very much, Madam President. Rapporteur. Thank you, Madam President. Good afternoon. Two spe specific things that uh, concern our mandate. It has to do with uh, environmental defenders. Mr. Jorge Santos was explaining the seriousness of some situations, and I would like him to tell us more about it. And also, if the state is planning to adopt specific measures to protect environmental defenders, because their role is so very much important for the protection of nature in Guatemala, and also in the fight against climate change. We've said this in our resolution on um, the climate emergency that I would also like to mention once again. And with that in mind, I would also like to know if there are any special measures to protect human rights defenders in uh, terms of um, business endeavors. As Commissioner Hernandez was saying, we have the right to defend rights as one of the principal uh, criteria in terms of uh, companies and human rights. Thank you, Rapporteur. There are no more interventions for the Commission. Now we'll leave the floor to the civil society. Thank you. I will speak first 
and I will be answering some of the questions that the commissioners have asked, and then my colleagues will take the floor. With regard to the question made by the Special Rapporteur on Economic, Social, Cultural, and Environmental Rights, we are concerned because in 2020, the Agrarian Affair Secretariat was dismantled. And right now, there are not enough mechanisms um, to resolve conflicts regarding land, territory, and these issues are being solved through evictions. We have documented evictions ordered by judges, but we are also documented extrajudicial evictions. And these occur within a framework of extreme violence. So we are seeing an increase in the number of these situations. And with regard to the defense of the environment, we are concerned because this is one of the types of human rights defense that is highly affected. Uh, last year, during the state of exception in the store municipality to protect a structure, a structivist structure uh, in the area, there was there were several human rights violations because there was no due diligence in the activities conducted by that mining project. And what we see that this is related also to the question made by Rapporteur Carlos Bernal, which is very important. There are relationships or connections between the different types of attacks against human rights defenders. What we are saying is that public institutions in the state of Guatemala are being manipulated in order to guarantee impunity. So when I appoint people who are related to corruption acts, when those people are in charge of the prosecution office, Inhabitants and citizens cannot access justice. Um, what's important to say is that we have justice operators that are affected by prosecution offices. Also, there was some mention to the usurpation of a prosecution office, and they are affecting those populations who have no access to land. And they are using other prosecution offices to criminalize protests. So we are seeing that there are some relationships that are fundamental. Thank you. In order to provide an answer to the questions and comments made by the commissioners, as a user of the Inter-American System of Human Rights and also as a lawyer in the state of Guatemala, I would like to recall all of us who are here, as Commissioner Esmeralda was saying at the beginning, we are in an open constructive dialogue and it should be based on the principles of good faith. And I would like to quote uh, the principles such as Pacta Sunt Sarbanta, Bona Fide. We need, we cannot talk about domestic legislation if we are not observing international obligations. And our request is to share information. We are not here to appoint or to determine international responsibility. The system of petition and cases has that role, but we are here to provide information. I am a lawyer and a user of the Inter-American system in Guatemala. So when we are saying that judicial independence is at risk, is because there are proofs of this. 
and we are informing, we are reporting. So we are seeing that the situation and the independence of judicial operations is at risk. The appointment of judges in high courts are not occurring because there is no political will to do so. And sometimes what we realize is that the quorum is not reached. And so these positions, these uh, courts are never completed. They are always open positions. So we need to protect the institutionality of the judiciary in Guatemala. But it's also to, important to talk about how access to justice is being affected. There is no fair trial. There, is, there are no reasonable periods of time. There are some strategies such as confidentiality that are being used. How can I detain a person if I don't have access to the information and to know whether that person could be responsible? So sometimes there are minor offenses and there are operators that are being prosecuted in those cases sometimes. And there are people who have no access to fundamental rights because criminal law is being manipulated. The thematic reports of the commission talked about the undue process of law. And I'm talking about the manipulation of criminal proceedings. Although democratic criminal policies establish very clear that punitive measures should not be used to manipulate the criminal proceedings. That's what we are seeing. 24 justice operators have been affected and probably there are more justice operators that are facing the risks. I would like to answer some specific questions, those from Commissioner Esmeralda. And our goal is to share this information to the commission. We want to contribute to a constructive dialogue. This is constructive criticism, especially because sometimes when you do not agree with the public policies implemented, you are considered an enemy and we are here to protect the history of Guatemala. Thank you so much. Lastly, I would like to clarify something to the commission, to the country reporter. There is one question she asked and um, the representation of the state was not able to clarify this. Have to, and it has to do with the appointment of judges. Our system of judge appointments only covers first instance judges. When it comes to appointment of appeal judges and justices is a political decision that is made by the leaders and the politicians in the administration. The state is not providing more information in this dialogue today. This year, we faced two issues with the appointment law, the ruling of the Constitutional Court and the reform passed by the Congress of the Republic two months ago. And these two decisions delayed the appointments from before. And the Supreme Court of Justice has the administrative power and the Appointment Council has no power. Um, it's important to say as well that we as representatives of civil society taking into consideration the different entities, we want to inform about the different persecutions against justice operators, especially there are cases and attacks against human rights defenders. And 
investigations are not being conducted. The state did not provide information about the complaints presented by justice operators who have been affected while exercising their role. Many of their complaints have been dismissed. As a result, we request this honorable commission to follow up on the resituation of justice operators. The state should address this situation immediately. Second, um, it's important that the public prosecution office stops uh, attacking justice operators because this limits the right to defense and also defendant lawyers should not be attacked. Also, we call upon the public prosecutor's office to train their officials regarding the protocol of investigation into crimes against human rights defenders and the state should guarantee access to justice. For example, in the case of Mr. Judge Alves. Also, we request that there are improvements in the protocol regarding the appointment of appeal judges and justices of the Supreme Court. Taking into consideration the situation of risk for justice operators, journalists, social communicators, in order to guarantee judicial independence, precautionary measures should be granted in favor of prosecutor Virginia Nepada. The state should be recalled of its responsibility of protecting human rights defenders and to guarantee the adoption of international treaties on human rights. Seventh, we call upon the judiciary to create a technical and a feasible judicial policy to guarantee due process in an effective way, also to establish protocols and also taking into consideration the current situation of the judiciary. Thank you. Lastly, we would like to request the state to guarantee the security and the integrity of justice operators. Thank you so much. You were running out of time. Thank you. Now I would like to give the floor to the state for another 12 minutes. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, for the intervention of the state of Guatemala, we have heard uh, the interventions of the commissioners and of the rapporteur, and also the presentation of the petitioners of the current hearing. We have paid attention to the issues of concern, attacks against human rights defenders, the appointment of judges, confidentiality in judicial cases, and also the decisions made by jurisdictional bodies and the situation of justice operators in general. Taking into consideration the time that we have been assigned, I would like to give the floor to the representatives of the Public Prosecution Office and the judiciary in order to clarify the questions uh, asked by the commissioners. And I would like to reiterate something on behalf of the state of Guatemala. We reaffirm that there is no persecution nor criminalization against justice operators and human rights defenders. It's important to recall the commissioners that the statements presented by the state of Guatemala are based on official and truthful information. The democratic system in Guatemala and the respect for human rights in Guatemala are a priority as established in its constitution. Any act of violence against journalists or persons at a national level will have effects and sanctions. And the state always recognizes the right of persons to denounce these acts of criminalization before the competent bodies. Also, the state of Guatemala protects fundamental rights and any violation enshrined in our constitution and criminal law should be investigated and sanctioned by competent courts. 
it's also important to recall that the reason to um, issue detention orders, etc., should be done respecting the principles of justice and of warranties. And judges should provide explanation for their decisions. And those decisions can be challenged using the legal remedies that exist in our country. After exhausting due process, um, the decision made by a judge cannot be considered arbitrary. In the Republic of Guatemala, the rights of challenging a decision uh, is possible through the existing legal remedies. Also, the state can send the commission any information that can help explain and base what the state has presented today. Now I would like to give the floor to a prosecutor from the public prosecutor's office. So he will be clarifying some of your concerns. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Tomas Alvarez Lopez. I'm prosecutor of the public prosecutor's office of the nation. I would like to mention two aspects that have been covered during this hearing. First, I would like to talk about the number of complaints filed by human rights defenders. As the petitioners explained, I'd like to facilitate communication and coordination between the participants of this hearing. In the case of the Human Rights Prosecution Office, we have a specialized unit which is in charge of following up on the complaints presented by activists and human rights defenders. In that regard, the real data that I have now uh, indicate that in 2022, we have a record of 18 complaints. Actually, they are 17 because one of those complaints uh, was canceled because it was similar to a previous complaint. And by reviewing the information on complaints from last year, for example, between July 2021 and December 2021, there were only 22 complaints recognized by the agency. So um, the data presented today really caught my eye. I invite the petitioners to come to us. Um, I have had the possibility of meeting some of the persons among the petitioners. I invite them to come to us to see uh, and to agree on the data uh, presented by human rights defenders. Another important aspect that I would like to mention is that the public prosecutor office who is in charge of criminal prosecution, there is no limitations to presenting complaints. We urge members of population to file complaints at the different prosecution offices across the country. But in the case of the Verona building, where the permanent attention office is located, the office receives complaints 24 seven. So there is no restriction to filing complaints. What's more, those complaints can be filed through online platforms. And therefore there is no restriction to file a complaint. I also would like to make reference to the confidentiality that was mentioned before by the petitioners. And I would like to say the following, what is established in Article 314 of the Criminal Code of Guatemala. It establishes that the nature of the acts in an investigation will be confidential for outsiders. And as lawyers are well aware, the acts and the actions 
could be examined by the person that is being accused and all the persons who have been ordered to participate. And this confidentiality is regulated. It does not depend on the petition of the public prosecutor office, but it will also be subjected to the jurisdictional control of the judges hearing the cases. It's also important to say that the public prosecutor's office always follows the principles of objectivity, legality, impartiality, and follows the law taken into consideration Article 251 of the Constitution of Guatemala. Now I would like to give the floor to the representative of the judiciary. Ávila, yo soy asesor jurídico del organismo judicial y con referencia. I am a legal advisor of the judiciary, and with regards to what was mentioned at this hearing, I will try to summarize and be as concise as possible. I will um, refer to two specific issues. First one, the judicial career. Right now, there is a reform to the corresponding law. But uh, in constitutionality, um, reports were filed. So I will refer to something that occurred in 2016 when this law was passed. This new law, which was sanctioned, went hand in hand with a constitutional reform, which unfortunately or fortunately, I cannot know that, did not take place. So the result was that there was um, confusion between the existing uh, regulations and the Constitution of Guatemala, which led to a duplicity of functions and uh, certain confusions with regards to the Council and the Supreme Court. So because of all these difficulties, the uh, inconstitutionalities were reported. Why? Because there wasn't a constitutional reform on Article 209 of our Constitution, which says that the appointment of judges and staff, auxiliary staff, are exclusive to the Supreme Court. And this contradicted the functions that had been given to the council. That is why big unconstitutionalities are reported and then why the Congress decided to reform the law. So that all the appointments and dispositions made about judges to be constitutional. There's also a mention about the appointment of uh, Supremes and Magistrates of the Supreme Courts and uh, Supremes of, of, sorry, Magistrates of the Appeal Courts or Courts of Appeal. And I would like to say that, as was mentioned before, the seventh um, Office of Magistrates issued a ruling and its execution is very complex with regards to the appointment of the members of the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeals. That is why our Congress has tried to have this election, this appointment, but the ruling is so complex that it has not allowed the Congress to do so successfully. And this is Another example of the state's willingness to comply with the ruling, but the fact is that it is restrained by the complexity of this resolution that, as I mentioned, this takes too, it is, it, it's been taking too long to execute. And because of it, the work of the legislative cannot be restrained because not only does it um, apply to the appointment of judges and magistrates, but it also uh, forces two other proceedings to take place. Thank you. I would like to thank the representatives of the state. We are reaching the end of this hearing. I would like to 
thank once again the state for being here for all the information you have provided. And I would also like to, to thank the civil society organization that requested this hearing and everyone that took part in it, but um, especially justice operators, journalists, human rights defenders who came to the commission with their concern. We've already said this more than once, and both the state and the civil society know this. The Inter-American Commission in its work head by its rapporteur, Esmeralda Rosemena, is at your disposal to bring these two positions closer. Today, we were told about the complaints and about the willingness for dialogue. We are here, our rapporteurships are here to for you. We have an annual report, there's a roadmap we have designed, but this needs to be implemented and we are at your disposal for you. And I would also like to address everyone watching this hearing apart from those who are taking part in it. I would like to reinstate the Commission's commitment to the defense of human rights, to access to justice, the investigation of human rights violations, and the technical cooperation and monitoring work, which is at the disposal of both parties. Having said this, I will close this meeting. Thank you very much and have a great afternoon. Bye. Good afternoon. Bye-bye.